Hey everyone, Smile Each Day here. Today we have seven or eight questions from seven people. Um, that That's the biggest number of people we've had so far. That is awesome. <laughs> so the users are Andy, Ben, Wob, Maelstrom, James Wright, Victoria, Wes Train. Thank you guys so much and a couple of you guys have written before and I thank you guys so much for once again writing to me and for the new writers who wrote to me thank you guys so much for taking your time out to um, ask a question to me that means so much to me um, I'm gonna get right into the questions here and here we go so from Andy would love to hear your thoughts on SB and neurotypical relationships and if you have any friends or significant others who ha who are also Aspie. My thoughts are in general on relationships with Aspies and neurotypicals are hand in hand with each other. I mean some neurotypicals are accepting towards us, others are not. Um, it's kind of like a mixed answer of uh, basically of who the people are. Um, but us as Aspies, we're very um, big into being nice to people and, uh, well at least I am anyway, and uh, being kind to people and uh, some some neurotypicals like that, others do not. Um, that's all I'm going to say about relationships in general. Um, if you were asking about boyfriend-girlfriend type like relationships, uh, eh, kind of the same, like neurotypicals with people towards us, not really the best, uh, not really the best answer, but sometimes it can be good, some people like it, other people don't, other people don't know how to deal with us, other people can't tolerate us, so, um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's my answer anyway. Thank you for writing, Andy. Ben. Why are some SBs bad and slash or too afraid to ask for things? That's a good question and I've never thought that question before from us. Um, I guess, I guess maybe the person who is an SB has tried to ask before and uh, got a very like kind of like a shocking answer or something that didn't agree with their mind and um, they tend to try to stay away from uh, asking for things again because of it. Uh, yeah, that's hard and I mean I feel sorry for the for Aspies or Audis that have that, that are too afraid to ask. I had that for the longest time and uh, now I just kind of open myself up um, towards asking things. I had to. Uh, but you know, I, I respect you guys if you guys cannot, uh, if you guys cannot ask for things, um, yeah. But please, uh, you know, if you ever need to ask me anything question-wise, please do. Um, I'm always here to listen, of course, and I will not, um, I will not, uh, make fun of you or anything of that nature, just so you know. Okay, thank you, Ben. <laughs> Wob. Wob. Thank you for writing to me again, Wob. Wob, what's your favorite dog breed? My favorite dog breed is a Border Collie. I love Border Collies. They are smart. They are witty. They can chase sheep. They are awesome. I love, I love Border Collies. They're my favorite dog. Um, Maelstrom, do you have any advice on how autistic people can find jobs opportunities suited to them in life that they don't aggravate overload too much? Since I have never like had a job, job I've had like things like a paper round and uh, things like that. But I, I've been more like the solo wolf type person, like making my own jobs and stuff like that. Like I've, you know, like some of you know, I wrote this book and now it's just published, which I'm very excited about. But I did that all on my own. Um, because I know I cannot work with people, so I, uh, just gave myself some slack and I just did all the work on my own of editing and doing the cover and everything else. Um, but I would say if you could do solo work, um, through any company, do that. 
that would be my advice to you is to, if you can do solo work on your own and not in a team or a group, then do that. Uh, if you're a social person that likes being in groups, do that too. But I know a lot of people that have Asperger's or autism tend to want to be individual and do their own thing. So if you can find a solo job, then, you know, that you should head down that path. <laughs> uh, James Wright asks, do you like toddlers? I like toddlers. Toddlers are cool, except for when they cry and they scream and they and when you take all their candy, they scream at you more and you know and they hit you and they punch you and everything else. And but other than that, yeah, they're cool. <laughs> yeah, they're cool. They you can lead a you can lead a toddler up a gum tree, as we say in New Zealand. You can lead them up a gum tree, and you don't do that like um, you don't do that on purpose, but you can do. Um, but the, the, I love them because they're so innocent and just awesome. Yeah, I like toddlers. Victoria asks, what exactly is high-functioning Asperger's? Um, high-functioning Asperger's is basically like, uh, if you were diagnosed with it, you're pretty much either average, uh, in the average Asperger's spectrum to the high end Asperger's, meaning you are highly intelligent. Uh, that's as far as what I know. Um, but uh, I don't, I don't, I personally don't look at stuff like that because um, I find Asperger's to be so diverse that, um, and there's a whole heap of different people out there with Asperger's with whole heaps of different minds and everything, and I don't really think of high functioning autism or low functioning or average or any of that kind of stuff but uh that's what high functioning asperger's is uh and wes train you wrote a couple of questions again to me thank you so much wes train do you think there needs to be a greater awareness and acceptance of autism and the need needs of autistic people um, yes, I do believe there needs to be a greater awareness, especially with, uh, especially with law enforcement and things like that and the medical world and everything else because I don't know too much. Even doctors, they like look at you and you're just like, I have this for life and I've had this to me. I've gone to a doctor and they've like come up to me and I'm like, I have this for life and they're like, oh, you know, no, you can go and work. I'm like, no, this is like permanent in my head. There needs to be a greater awareness um, in the community, I believe. Yes. Yes, I do believe. And the other one from Wes Train. Do you think having pets is a, is a good idea for an SB autistic person? Yes, I have a cat named Jet. She is awesome. She lights up my days. So yes, I do believe that. If you can take care of an animal or a pet, then you should have a pet or an animal. And I'm sorry to all the newcomers, I write all my questions in my book uh, that you guys wrote to me. And one, I like to keep them as a keepsake. And two, it's just easier for me to look than be all on the computer and have annoying clicking and everything else. Um, but anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for writing in. That is all the questions. And I hope I answered them the best I could. I tried my best. Um, yeah, that is it from me. Uh, Thank you guys so much. Please subscribe to me and uh, like my videos and watch more videos. And I will see you guys in next week's video. Thank you guys so much. Bye, guys. Bye.